Chapter 1 of The Outdoor Chums in the Big Woods. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Leavesley. The Outdoor Chums in the Big Woods by Captain Quincy Allen. Chapter 1. That looks like a challenge, Frank. It was well fired at any rate, Bluff. I should say yes, because it knocked my hat clear off my head. Do we stand for that sort of thing, or shall we accept the dare? There are half a dozen and more of the enemy against four outdoor chums, but what of that? This is the first snow of the fall, with a real tang in the air. Say yes, Frank, and let's get busy. Here are Bluff and Jerry, ready to eat up that crowd in a snowball fight. What do you say, Will? Oh, count me in, because I can see they're just spoiling for it, exclaimed the fourth boy in the party, who did not look quite so hardy as his comrades, although no weakling. Well, I should think it would be a shame to miss it, when the snow is just soft enough to handle easily, and Jerry Wellington held up a big round ball, he had quickly manipulated in his practised hands. That settles it. Everybody, get busy making a supply of ammunition. Then we'll charge their line and give them as good as they send. The last speaker was Frank Langdon. His three comrades had always been proud to look up to Frank as their leader. They had been through a great many lively adventures together, and up to the present, no one had ever found cause to regret the fact that when it came to deciding on their plans, Frank's word carried the greatest weight. While they were feverishly stocking up with a supply of such ammunition as is required to win snowball battles, it might be well for the new reader to learn a few important facts concerning Frank and his chums, as narrated in previous volumes of the series. They lived in the thriving town of Centerville, which was situated in one of the middle states. Coming together in order to encourage the spirit of outdoor life to their mutual profit, the four lively lads had called their little association the Rod, Gun and Camera Club. In the initial story under the name of The Outdoor Chums, or The First Tour of the Rod, Gun and Camera Club, were given numerous strange happenings that befell them on the occasion of their first camping trip together. Later on, they ran upon a mystery connected with an island that had a bad name in the neighbourhood, and of course could not rest satisfied until they solved this puzzle to their satisfaction. In order to understand just what they did, you must read the second volume, issued under the title of the Outdoor Chums on the Lake, or Lively Adventures on Wildcat Island. End of chapter 1